Well, Chris, you're very welcome to The Written Word. Thanks for doing this. Much appreciated. Thanks very much for having me, mate. How are so, you? I'm very well. I'm very well indeed. Um, you are in sunny Italy. Sunny Italy, yeah. Can you see behind me? Yeah. yeah. Very, very Italian. Very uh, yeah, I'm in Italy. Madness. Happy days. So my first question is usually, what are you reading or what are you listening to? In your particular case, you've got your own podcast, yes. uh, which you started this year. So yeah. can you tell me about the podcast, what you're doing, how it came about. How do you set up a podcast? What ways it work? Mm -hmm. So um, when I was in drama school in Manchester for three years, and I've always loved podcasts. The first podcast I got into was Ricky Gervais. Yep. You know, I watched, uh, listened to all their XFM shows and they were unbelievable. So funny. And then got on to Joe Rogan, obviously, and never realized that like I, I love going for walks and stuff. So if I go for a walk, stick on a, a podcast, could do me for three hours and I could walk miles and not even realize. So it's uh, it, it was always a, a good uh, entertainment thing for me just to, to keep me going. I prefer to listening to music. So podcast I, I always wanted to do one and then I lived with uh, five of my mates in drama school so there was three la three of us lads in the house and I said to them I was like listen lads I don't know if you want to it wasn't we, we started a podcast and it wasn't really for people like obviously it was for people to listen to like we published them on Spotify and stuff but it was more to use as like a time capsule for us <laughs> Uh, because they're still there they're still there for us to listen to and like we talk about what we're doing in drama school and and just different topics and stuff so it was always good we never took it very seriously it was just a bit of crack and then I think obviously with lockdown and stuff I decided to start my own podcast play and pretend and it was mainly because our podcast when we were in Manchester was just us mates having a laugh I wanted to have conversations with people have types of conversations that I wouldn't normally have with people talking about acting, uh, talking about people's careers. And, 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 and again, this one, Plan Pretend's not really for people to listen to. That's not the reason as to why I do it. I, I do it because there's people that I get to catch up with and there's people who I get to meet for the first time. It's all on Zoom. It's all, it, 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 Zoom is so handy. So, like, I think we've all kind of become accustomed to this way of life. And, it's sweet. It's given me the opportunity to speak to people in America and England, all around the place. So yeah, it's been great. Uh, the podcast itself, I use a a, a, a program called Anchor. Anchor. And, yeah. I write this down. Yeah. Okay. So Anchor, uh, it's so good and it does everything for you. So you m make your podcast and then all you do is upload the audio mm -hmm. onto it. And then just as you would do with a YouTube clip or a YouTube video, you name it and uh, you decide whether you want to publish it to Spotify, Apple, uh, uh, Google Podcasts. It goes to everywhere and one click and you're done. And it goes everywhere. I do mine on, on YouTube as well, just to give it a, a, an extra element to it. But um, yeah, podcast wise, it, it, it's never been more easy to, to make a podcast. Like you could do it with your phone, recording yeah. audio, upload it there, and it's on Spotify the next day. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a real good way, and it gives you your analytics if you want to really take it seriously and see how many people are listening to you, uh, their age range, where they're from, uh, what specific devices they're using, what specific uh, are they using Spotify, Apple Podcast, whatever. So it, it's been really good that way. It kind of just does all the work for you. And is it more, the more people listen to it as an audio podcast than watch the YouTube thing or what way is it? Do you know what? It all depends on the guest. For me, uh, for Play and Pretend, it all depends on the guest. So I think it depends on, because what I do is kind of, I really only marketed, market mine on Instagram. So mm -hmm. I just have the link in my Instagram bio. And uh, I just say, once an episode's up, I use a few wee clips like a clip of the person acting or performing or whatever, and then a clip from the, the podcast the day it goes out and just say, listen, the link's in the bio and the link is like one of them link trees. So it'll have YouTube, Spotify, Apple. So you just decide whatever way you want to listen to it. So I'm able to get the analytics from YouTube and then the analytics for Spotify, Apple, Google and stuff like that. So it's kind of, a lot of people do prefer to listen to it or to, to watch it, sorry. Um, but a lot of it would surprise you how many people do listen to it. 
I suppose I mean I would what mainly watch stuff, but yeah. a, a few mates of mine who've been in the podcast for years said the, the whole reason they don't watch and just listen is they can do they can multitask. They can be in the car driving, they can be going for a run, they can be in the gym, they can be standing cooking. So yeah. they, they just like to stick up set of wireless headphones on uh, and, and listen to a conversation while doing something else um 100 like I, that's what i said like about when, when i go for walks i would go for a walk and have it on and then if there's something funny that's happened like maybe in the studio mm-hmm. i'd because i i have youtube premium so i i can like listen to it off when it's not on the screen yeah so then i can i can flip it up and, and watch whatever we bit it was but if i'm in the house like i'd say podcasts are the main things that i watch I'm heavily into like uh, comedians podcasts, like uh, uh, a lot of comedians from America. And uh, there's two guys from, uh, one's from Chester, one's from Liverpool. It's called Have a Word podcast. And like, I love watching them. And it, it, it's interesting because uh, it's the people who have an interesting thing to look at. Because at the end of the day, it is just two people having a conversation. But if yeah. their studio has a, a cool look about it and it's appeasing to the eye, then then unreal. It, it makes it a lot better. Uh, but yeah, I, I, either way, watching or listening, that's the way I go. Yeah. And I was thinking you've invested in some headphones and a microphone and a small amount of kit. Was that a big outlet mm-hmm. or what was the... It was dead on. You know, um, it's interesting because it's just gradually... I, 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 I don't know why, but I've always been obsessed with microphones. And I don't know why it's such a weird obsession, but I love microphones and I love like the, the Shure SM7Bs. That uh, that Joe Rogan has them big ones, yeah. like that would be my my dream come true. See if I got an, an SM7B, sure, oh, unbelievable! I'd be the best present anyone could ever get me. But uh, what I've realized, and it's it's through like research and watching reviews on YouTube and seeing what the best type of kit is out there for value for money. This microphone was like fifteen quid on Amazon, and it's spot on. Got a wee audio interface. Got the headphones, got another mic, and it was all in around 200 quid. So it wasn't too bad. Yeah. A lot of the time, uh, because my, my podcast is only on Zoom, uh, mm-hmm. I've done one in-person interview, but it's all on Zoom. The thing is, it's out of my control, my guests' audio quality. Yeah. So that's, that's out of my control. So the only thing I have control over is my video quality and my audio quality. So if I can make that the best it can be, makes it a little bit easier to listen to than if yeah. it's two people using their laptop microphone or whatever and it just sounds like you're in on someone's zoom it, it kind of ch- changes the aspect of it and uh, a podcast and do you think you will when things open back up do the in-person podcast or are you happy that it's a mixture of both or do you know what yes i'm happy that it's a mixture of both it's it's it came about because i wanted to talk to people who I wouldn't have a chance to speak to in person anyway. It's people that I wouldn't have, like maybe people that don't live near me. Well, now I live in Italy, so no Uh one's near me now. So uh, Zoom works perfectly. But I I did one in person, one with my mate Cameron Court, and it worked grand. It it was all good. Uh, It takes a lot more setting up because obviously I have a two mic setup and it's a case of uh, uh, matching up the audio with the video. Yeah. like doing the, the claps and all that, all that jazz so but i love all that it, it just adds to it for me I, I do it for being able to set up the stuff even doing this today mick i was just loving setting everything up because i brought everything with me i was like yeah. i'm going to italy for the foreseeable i'm bringing it all so yeah with zoom i'm able to continue them i i, I kind of had a backlog of episodes so yeah. I, I did it quite a lot uh in like the space of a few weeks so i knew that i would have plenty of time while I'm here to like settle, settle myself and get settled in and still have podcasts coming out each week. So you, uh, you're, yours are weekly on a Tuesday, is that right? Yeah, and weekly that, on a Tuesday. Is that just a thing where you can record four or five in one week and then go where I can take the next three weeks off and do whatever That's else? That's it. Yeah, it gives me time to be able to get more guests and mm-hmm. gives me time to maybe, if I've done four or five, I'll, I'll, like, I'll leave it this week or next week uh, and just kind of cool off because I don't want too much of a backlog because I always kind of feel bad for the person who's on it on the podcast because they could do an episode and then it's not out for like a month and a half. But I I do tell them that I'm like, listen, it is going up. Don't worry. Just I have a backlog. So, but it's worked, it's worked well for me. Uh, Like I'm 
Uh, I think I've got four more still that I recorded back in Belfast. And then by the time they run out, I'll be living down in Rome. So I'll be, I'll, I'll do a few more there, just as long as I have Wi-Fi. And then I'm so Yours is a very specific podcast, Playing Pretend, is actors and how they have got where they've got to. Would that be a fair assessment? Yeah, yeah I, I've had, uh, I've had three comedians on as well. Okay. And, we, and, and they, they have had their, uh, uh, what, sorry? So would you say it's for performers then? Performers, yeah. Um, I just find it interesting, like how each person that I've spoken to has had a different way in yeah. to, to the business. It's really interesting, and some stories like are, are are similar, and then others are just people got in a, into it by chance and whatever. So uh, I, I've loved it. I've taken a lot from it. I, I, I like. I only. St- I, I think I start the podcast by saying how we first met, whether mm-hmm. we did or not, and then. My last question is always, what advice would you give? And that advice really is for me. I'm like, what advice would you give for actors? But like, it, they're talking to me. So I'm like, okay, I'll jot that down. Fantastic. Uh, because it, 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 every every little helps. Every bit of wisdom that I'm able to be told, I, I take it all on board because it's important. Like I, I'm I'm 25 now. I'm, I'm, I'm not that young, but like it's very inexperienced still. So it, it's very important to to not get ahead of yourself and think you, you've graduated from drama school. This is it. It's yeah. not, it's all about getting the advice from the people who know how hard it is and how hard you have to work. And uh, yeah, just um, kind of being able to have conversations with them and kind of being on a, on a similar wavelength with them in that conversation. So yeah. Thank you. So have You've approached all of your guests, or have any of them approached you, or can people approach you if there's if there's an actor out there who has X amount of years under their belt and they go, actually, you know what, fair play to him for having to go to this podcast. Can I contact you and say, well, listen, if you want to chat to me, or what? How do you go about doing it? Absolutely, I, uh, I, I, everyone I've had on, I've approached, uh, and they have just been so lovely about it, and and been really, and they've loved it because I, I, I feel like. Um, not many people i think this is a, still a quite a new thing uh like podcasts and and stuff like that and people aren't used to telling their story in such a way on a long yeah. form conversation so it's very uh the, uh after every episode like i would stop recording and they'd be like that was unreal i've never done anything like that i loved it so it, it's it's been really good for them but i'm willing to talk to anyone like I could talk the back legs of a donkey, like so. I I'm happy to talk to anyone, and it's uh, yeah, anyone who uh, anyone would wanna come on my podcast, I'd be honoured. So, yeah, absolutely, I'm open for invitation. Um, wh- have you a plan on where it's going to go, or are you just going to wait and see what happens? Just you, you carry on doing and, and seeing. No, I think it, I or? think I'm no, I I think I'm gonna keep going the way I'm going and I, I never really expected much from it mm-hmm. uh do you know the one the one thing that I'm most happy about with this podcast is my family get to watch it uh right. like my mom and dad don't miss a week my two grannies do not miss a week they love it they love it so much and it, like my granny be like what times are Christopher on on Tuesday and you're like anytime you want it to YouTube but she didn't know uh so it, it's great for me and it's great for like the likes of like my mom's friends who maybe only know me as kids and now see me and grown up. And I feel like it's important to allow the guests to tell their story. But I feel like if I have a, a, a similar thing that I, I relate to what they're saying and I have something to say, I, I never shy away from, from saying what I want to say. So it's a good way of getting to know their story and kind of getting to me, know me a little bit as well. So um, I, I, I just kind of take every day as it comes. Obviously, as you can tell, I'm in, Italy just on a whim here so uh so what I have no plans. You, you, you're you've got a job there is that correct I have a job so I um I graduated drama school in Manchester uh May 2019 and then I moved to London had an agent moved to London it was all happy as Larry and then nothing was happening no jobs were coming barely any auditions and then a friend of mine was like I've just got an audition for a uh a, a, a a job in Italy. Uh, if I could get you an audition, would you go for it? I'm like, well, yeah, obviously. I'm working 45 hours at the bar 
absolutely get me to Italy right now. So uh, we both auditioned, we both got the the job, and um, so what we were originally doing when we first came out, that was February 2020, the start of February. We came out and we were going, we were on tour, traveling around Italy, and uh, we were doing shows for kids in school. So it was like uh, TIE, like theater and education. Yeah. So it was to help the kids learn English. Uh, so it, it was a very strange thing to try and uh it's not something that I'd ever done before. I'd never taught before. I'd never done any kids shows or anything like that. So it was kind of a new thing to learn and, and I really enjoyed it. Obviously the obvious happened, coronavirus. So we had to come home. We came home and then uh, just, I think three or four weeks ago, she was like, can you just come back out mm-hmm. next week? So we're like, yep. So yeah, this is us here for the foreseeable. Um, Tomorrow I travel up towards Venice. I'm there for a week, and then I travel down to Rome for six weeks. Really? And then, and then the summer uh, we do. Uh, there's like summer camps, so it's for kids. But we, it, it's all like theater based, so it's theater workshops, and it's to like sing songs and play games and stuff like that. And and in order to do like a performance at the end of the week or end of the month or whatever it is, so we have camps in like. Uh, the south near Sicily, uh, near Naples, Rome, Adriatic coast, uh, everywhere. So it, it's it's great. And like me and my mate who are here now, we're going to be camp leaders. So we'll kind of just be traveling from camp to camp, yeah. living in the sun, drinking beer, eating pizza. It's living the dream. It. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's going to take you up to the end of the summer and then see what happens. Absolutely. See what happens. Like I said, I... Uh, I think when I left drama school, I had a, a plan in my head. And and I, I feel like when you have a plan and a, a little bit of it doesn't go to plan, it can throw you completely off. And that's what happened to me. I was fully uh, in the fact that I'm going to be an actor and I'm going to be this and going to be that. And you have high expectations and it, it doesn't happen that way. So I've kind of had to adapt my uh, what I want to do. And it's completely completely fine i'm in no rush this year has kind of put everything into perspective for me uh with the whole coronavirus the lockdown i've i've been very lucky and being able to spend so much time with my family in belfast but it's it's now i'm like i'm in no rush to get a part in this yeah. or do that if i have the opportunity to move to italy for a few months and live in uh, by the sea enjoying life then i'll do that i'll do whatever makes me happy because I'd I'd rather do that than than sit in the house, get one audition, maybe get one acting job, and then six months later, I'm still living off that one job. So may as well do what makes you happy. And uh, yeah, I just have no plans. Just ride the wave. Yeah, it's that Mike Tyson thing. You know, everyone's got a plan until they get a punch in the face. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred so, percent. Fair, fair play. Like, um, yeah. well, I'm glad it's panning out. You definitely got. You know, you you a great podcast there. Um, I tune in watching it. I think they're really good. They usually last about an hour. Is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The hour market kind of whips along. Um, yeah. So if people are looking for your podcast, what do they type into a search engine or what, where do they go? Yeah. For? It's, uh, well, you, you, can, you can find everything on my Instagram. It's Chris Michael Venny. Uh, just no spaces, no capitals. Chris Michael Venny. But uh, on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, it's Play and Pretend with Chris Michael Venny. That's how you find it. And um, so, you've about ten episodes up, is that right? Or uh, yeah, the tenth one's coming out tomorrow uh, with uh, Caroline Curran. I know she was on this with you. Yep. So that that was a it was a really good uh, conversation because we we all work together on Holy Holy Bus. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we go today. Mad. That was just that was years ago. So it's mad to talk about those stories and like the, the different jobs that we worked on, and and now we're all everywhere. <laughs> Well, look, Chris, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy My it. My pleasure. So play and pretend on any platform or Chris McElvenny on Instagram. That's it. 100%. Right, well, thank you very much.